Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Director, for my kind invitation. Uh, and welcome and uh, greetings to, to everyone uh, watching. And uh, congratulations to the National Library of Lithuania on its 100th anniversary. And someone who works in a library that's not yet 50 years old. Uh, so I think this is a, a fantastic achievement. So I'm going to talk about uh, librarians, partners, and leaders. I have a lot of slides and a lot of words, but I'm not going to read out everything on the slides. I'm going to talk to you briefly about the British Library, about some of the partnership working that we're doing, touch very briefly on partnership theory, and then think about partnership working in terms of what we learn from our practice and what makes effective partnership working. So, this is uh, the British Library's uh, strategy and vision document, Living Knowledge, and that runs 2015 to 2023 and we see our mission as making our as it says there intellectual heritage accessible to everyone and I think particularly in the UK national libraries in the past have been seen to be only relevant to researchers to people uh, who, who are um, having an academic lifestyle and we are very much working now to show and to to live our, our vision that we are everyone's national library and we are not just there for research, and, and our definition of research is very bright, very broad, but that we're there to inspire people, and people are even allowed to enjoy themselves in our library. So we have six purposes or aims. Um, some of them are, are pretty obvious, and, and all of them are, are similar to your, your aims here. So the ones that people particularly think about are custodianship of our collections and around enabling and supporting research. We also do a lot of work with business, and like you, we have cultural events, ways of exposing our collection and informing our collection to a broader group of people. We support learning of school age, children and families. And like you, we are very keen to be a part of an international um, uh, coalition of librarians and, and to fo foster international understanding. Sorry, thank you. It was a bit high, thank you very much. So to achieve our, um, our objectives, we have five uh, transformation portfolios of programmes that most of you will have. Heritage Made Digital is around um, uh, digitising um, our, our collections, our historic collections. St Pancras Transformed is around making our London site um, more successful, more relevant and opening up to the public in the 21st century. Everyone engaged is around involving our communities in, in, in our library um, and, and becoming a truly national library and thinking about um, developing a network of, of, national li of public libraries and our role in the national library landscape. For those of you who don't know, Boston Spa is where two thirds of our collection is. It's in, in an old munitions factory in Yorkshire. And again, we are, are working to make that um, a centre of um, excellence in collection management. And everything available is about openness of our collections, about open access, about discovery, and a lot of the work, again, that's going on elsewhere across the library sector. So, our portfolios, though, to sum up, are around openness and ac accessibility, around engagement with our communities, with our staff, and above all, are around partnerships and collaborations because we can't do this all on our own. So those are our values in our strategy. And again, the one that's highlighted at the bottom of the screen there is around collaborating to do more than we could by ourselves. And we very much, much believe that. So there are our drivers for partnership working around the, the value of data and ideas, around being open, around thinking about our physical spaces and experiences, and around the importance of collaboration and knowledge networks. So I'm now going to move on and talk about some of our partnerships, first of all with public libraries, and those three partnerships are our business and intellectual or IP centres, our living knowledge network, and some work we've done on researching a single digital presence in public libraries. Our business and IP centre model is around supporting entrepreneurs to start their business there by giving them, as it says, knowledge, collections and networks in a trusted and inspiring space. 
We started off, as it says there, with one centre in 2006. We are aiming to have 20 centres in public libraries in 20, by 2020. We've opened, just opened our, our 12th outside London um, in Glasgow this year. And we are applying that model to the local councils in London, um, the ones in, we are offered it to all 33 London boroughs. Um, and those 18 Orange actually took us up on the, on the offer. And the idea is to have start-up um, a start-up uh, support in every high street in the, in the capital of London. And we did some research on whether, whether this model of business and IP centre is worth it because it's fairly labour incentive. It was a big departure for us. I don't know if you can see, but the key... Whoops, sorry. The key statistic, I think, from there is that for every pound invested in this service we get a return of £6.95. And there's also some interesting statistics whoops, around, um, around women and black, Asian and ethnic minority people who traditionally don't take up public library services and who, don't actually st who are not um, the highest proportion of people who start up new businesses in the UK. So Living Knowledge Network, you'll see that map actually looks quite similar to the Business and IP Centre and a lot of the libraries are, are the same, in the same places. We work in partnership with the National Library of Scotland and the National Library of Wales and we're start supported by the Arts Council of England. And this was around us working together with public libraries in a more general sense than just business. And it's about, again, exchanging knowledges, developing experiences for our users and sharing staff development opportunities. And there are some statistics there. So I think perhaps the biggest one is, is, is around um, reaching more than, than one million people in two years. The picture is from something that happened only a couple of weeks ago. Aberdeen, for those of you who don't know, is a city that's 500 miles from London. And we had a, an, an event called um, Novels That Shaped Our World that was, was held in our St Pancras uh, building and that was streamed to, to the 20 or so public libraries in, in the Living Knowledge Network. Our single digital presence research was looking, we were commissioned by the Arts Council and by, by a, a charity called the Carnegie Trust, linked obviously to Andrew Carnegie, the great uh, library benefactor of the 19th century. And uh, we were asked to look at what a single digital presence could mean in the UK, bearing in mind in England alone there are 500 public library authorities, and bearing in mind that as a national library there we don't have uh, a legal um, mandate to lead the public library sector. We want to work in partnership with them, but they're, they're run in a very separate way by local authorities. So those are the five potential mo models. Deep shared infrastructure was around a shared library management system. And the safe social space was around some sort of equivalent of, of library planet that's on, on social media. We sent, we published the report this year and, and we, go, we were asked to go back and do further research and, and that's listed there. What I think is most interesting is the third point down where obviously technology came out as a central concern with our unit users, but actually also access and community. So I think as we're thinking about partnership work in a digital world, those human elements really remain important and that, that's one of my themes that I, I will continue to build on. And it is about responding to community needs first and foremost foremost. UK Research Reserve is, is a partnership with academic libraries and this is about our printed journal collections and enables our major research university libraries to deduplicate their print holdings and actually to use that space for learning and, and research. And that was a project which started in 2007 and we've launched that as a service and we are um, trying to build up that community looking for expressions of interest now. So with, uh, we are obviously a uh, common, common um, mission of, of national libraries is, is for legal deposit. And since 2013, we collect everything that is non-print as well. Um, and that is, we are one of six legal deposit libraries in, in, in the UK. And you can imagine that that is a real leap forward for us in actually having to archive the, the web, anything published with a UK domain name. And the uh, Alan Turing Institute was, was, was mentioned by your director before. This is our, our National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. It is only a few years old. And we have two part, main partnerships going along with them. They are a separate organisation technically, but they are based in our building at St Pancras, and we do work very closely with them. 
One big partnership is called Living with Machines, and that's us working with Alan uh, Turing Institute, but also five universities. And it is about us mining data, big data, um, from newspapers, from digitised newspapers from the 19th century. And it's an interesting project because it's about history. It's about what we can learn. At the moment, we're focusing on machine accidents in, in factories in, in the north of England, in places like Manchester and Leeds last year. And we're also working with crowdsourcing to try and... Because one of the things that's coming out is that initial digitisation of newspapers using PDF means that we can't, uh, they can't, they're not all machine readable and we actually need to go back and use humans. And again, this is about um, enriching our data holdings, but also advancing public awareness about what um, big data can do and how it can help us learn in the humanities as well as the sciences. And another project we're doing is around building an evidence base for public library research. Now, I can only speak for the UK, but librarians are not traditionally in the UK very good at building an evidence base for our services. So we're working at looking, deploying spatial data based on where libraries are situated and how far people are prepared to travel to their local public library. So this is what we feel the benefits of public library work partnership is, and that's a picture of Manchester Public Library in the north of England. And again, it's about learning from other professionals, about supporting each other, and about co-creating better offers for our, our users and our readers. So just to touch on some partnership working theory, I use the terms partnership and collaboration interchangeably. And then when I was doing some reading for this, I realised that, you know, collaboration's a successful partnership and you can go round and round. And that, that actually amused me, that quote, quote. What I actually find more useful is the work of Senate, who thought, thinks, who talks about cooperation prospering through empathy, through trying to understand the people that you're working with and being curious about your partners. And I think in a digital world, we need to remember that partnership is very much still about working with other people for other people, for our user communities. And again, co-creation has been mentioned. Those are some people who've written about it in, in, in the UK. And I think in the past, librarians in the UK at least have been very good at, at, at making out that we know everything, that we are the experts, and delivering and developing services in that way. And now we really have to move forward and co-create our services with our widest user community possible. So some challenges. I think challenges um, in partnership working about the biggest challenge for me at the moment is listening to our communities. And if in the past our community has only been a research-led community, as a national library in the UK, we have got to get better to learning from our community in the broadest sense. In our London uh, building, we are situated in one of the poorest parts of the capital, and we are already doing more to learn and listen and work with those people. Throughout, my, I live in the north of England. I live about three, two or three hundred miles away from London. And in the, my part of the country, people see the National Library as very London-centric, something that only for people in the capital. So thinking about our community in its broadest sense, thinking about families, about business, about school children, about that that broader u user community. And I think as librarians, and I'm speaking as someone who is a, a lifelong librarian, but I think libraries run by being um, staffed by multi-professional teams, and this works for whatever your professional background. We all need to continue to learn ourselves. If libraries are about learning, we need to be lifelong learners to deliver and develop and design effective services and support for our communities. Diversity and inclusion is, is mentioned um, both in, in the um, Sustainable Development Goals, but also is something that's a big issue in, in UK society at the moment. In terms of gender, librarianship in the UK is 79% women, but men are twice as likely to get a senior role. Um, and it's very much a white community in a, um, a profession, in a, um, a community in which in London is 46% black and minority ethnic, and in the rest of the country is 86%. So how can we deliver effective services if our staff don't reflect our communities as a whole? And that is a question I think that, that particularly is exercising us at the moment. So I don't know if anyone else is a great fan of Michael Gorman who talks about librarianship values and those are things actually that I think I strive to incorporate into my practice and I think that are useful in informing what we do as libraries and librarians. Particularly around stewardship in terms both 
of our collections and our content, but actually around stewardship of our profession and enabling people to develop the skills in terms of digital and data literacies and competencies, whatever you want, want to call them, um, in terms of for people to access those collections and to learn effectively from them. And so, a summary of some lessons from my practice. I think if we're working in partnership as librarians, we need to have professional confidence, which again, I can only say I don't think librarians in the past have done, about what we bring as professionals to any working with other people, particularly those outside our profession. I think that our need for, uh, to skill, to ensure that we keep upskilling ourselves in digital and data literacies and information competencies. We know that in our heads. I would suggest as a profession, we're not always the best at doing that. And the level that you need to know obviously depends on your role um, in your organization and in any partnership or project. But what I would say is that you need, we need to, to at least have a, a bird's eye view of what's going on and how data, big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, will affect our lives and how we can learn to, um, to work, live in that digital world. I think we need to build trust with our partners, but we are trusted, we are not necessarily neutral. I think some people talk about librarians being neutral. We're part of the debate and we all have standpoints and those are valid. We can be open and trusted. And I think that we need to actively seek collaboration with others rather than perhaps as we've done in the past, perhaps waiting for that to come along. I would say as a librarian, part of that lifelong learning is around maintaining our professional accreditation and our networks both national and international and it's really important that we continue we become and we continue to be a reflective practitioner um, in, in our professional lives thinking about what we're doing so what and, and reflecting back and continually improving our practice for our communities so to finish off a few quotes John Seeley Brown talks about libraries may well become the center of learning in a world of ubiquitous information. I would say we already are, but I'm biased, aren't I? And I will finish off with a, a quote from David Lanks, who's an American librarian um, intellectual. And he talks about librarians, because for me, it's librarians that make the difference in libraries. Too often, I'm shown room, a nice room full of books. In, in Britain, we have telephone box libraries and all sorts of things. Librarians make the difference in libraries. And our mission is around improving society through facilitating knowledge creation in our community, whether that's your local community, your academic community, or your national community. And without working with our communities to create our services and our libraries, we're not going to be able to welcome everyone in. And I'll finish, this is my final slide. This is on a tapestry in the British Library, and this is about us working in partnership with other professionals and with our communities to make sure that we're welcome and open to everyone. Thank you.